we'll use that uh, we'll use that notification as uh, as good as any to uh, to go ahead and start to go ahead and start the meeting. Again, like I said, I, I appreciate so many of you being uh, being prompt and being here by five o'clock. So we'll certainly go ahead and try to start at five. Um, I understand there, there's a football game tonight, so there may be some folks that want that would like to be home in time to see a football game. Um, and it's nice nice to have you out. If it's your first time in the facility, this is certainly uh, one of the nicer public facilities that we have in the county, and it's the uh, uh, you know, certainly one of the nicest in District Five. And I hope hope that you take advantage of the extension office as the resource that it is. Um, uh, we've put quite a bit of resources onto the property to try to be an amenity, especially for those of you which. Obviously, many of you live uh, within a couple miles uh, over on 11 Mile Creek. Um, so we hope this would be as, as great a resource or as many amenity as it can be for you. Um, so tonight, we're here to talk primarily about the uh, HMGP, the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, related to Hurricane Sally in the 11 Mile Creek area, um, you know, including Bristol, Bristol Park and Ashbury, uh, and Ashbury Park as well, Bristol Creek, Ashbury Park, um, and other areas along 11 Mile Creek. Um, I'm just going to take a couple minutes for the introduction. There's a lot of county staff and county vendors, uh, vendor staff here tonight. I'm not necessarily going to introduce everybody, but I do want you to note that the county administrator, Janice Gilley, as well as assistant administrator, Debbie Bowers, assistant administrator, Chips Kirschenfeld, county engineer, Joy Jones, um, and without going through everyone else, there's uh, basically your, your entire county leadership team here. Um, my aide, Dawn Trosh, which if you call downtown, it will be uh, primarily Dawn, or intern Dylan Conti, he's six foot eight, so you can see him if he's standing up somewhere, but um, it may be him that, were, that uh, would answer the phone. Uh, I'm going to turn the meeting over in just a minute to Stephen White with Arcadis. He's in the front. There's going to be a presentation related to the grant and the program, uh, the kind of an encompassing of the FEMA program. Unfortunately, uh, some parts of the program will be familiar to some of you that, uh, that went through this a few years ago with us. Um, may not be the same exact program, but some parts of it may be similar. And for that, uh, you know, for that repeated occurrence, I'm certainly, uh, I'm certainly sorry for that, that you're going through the same process or a similar process as uh, four or five years ago. But um, after the presentation, then we've got an area set up where you can ask questions. There's a podium. I'm kind of midway through the room, and uh, and we'll certainly open that up for you to ask questions, and we'll try to moderate or disseminate the questions to the folks that are most uh, most able to answer them in uh, in a professional way. I'm not professionally an engineer, so a lot of the engineering questions I may you know will probably get handed off to those that are. But um, Stephen, if you want to go ahead and take it from here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll start. Thank you and good evening. Um, there's one, sorry, one point of clarification. I'm actually uh, with Mott McDonald. We are the consultant for Escambia County, trying to assist with this grant application. We do have Arcadis on our team. We have members of Arcadis here present to answer questions. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. We have. Uh, is, this, uh, is this volume better? Okay. okay. I'm with Mott McDonald, we're the, the county's consultant, assisting them in this application. We do have Arcadis on our team, they are grant experts, um, so they do have staff members here to assist answering questions that you may have. They'll be available after the presentation, potentially to meet one-on-one -on -one with individuals if you'd care for. There's also an opportunity later to sign up for one-on-one -on -one in-person interviews at your residence. So, um, sorry, I can't, uh, can't see the presentation from here. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and... All right. All right. So, really first, I want to explain exactly what the grant opportunity that we're going to discuss is offering. And probably the most important is what this grant is. This grant is not intended to be immediate assistance for rebuilding your homes. It's not intended to cover living expenses, things of that nature. The grant is designed to assist the county in reducing their long-term flood risks in the area. Okay. So that's what 
you're looking at here. They do that by protecting or purchasing structures that have a history of repeat flooding. Or instituting other types of projects that will help mitigate that flood risk. In particular, what we're looking at is potential acquisition of properties. So that could be purchasing your homes and allowing you then to get out from that residence. Kelly, you could uh, change the slide for me. There's really three agencies involved in this process. You've got FEMA, they're the funding source. All the money for this project is coming from FEMA. That money, those funds are then put into the control of the Florida Department of Environment, uh, Emergency Management, FDA. And the county is responsible for putting in this application, and for the most part, we'll be dealing with FDA to see if they can get this application approved and get those monies to help them purchase these properties. Participation in this from the homeowner's perspective, completely voluntary. You're not going to be forced into the program. It's completely optional. That remains optional at all points throughout the process up until the point that you actually sign a contract to sell your house. So it starts, the county's going to put this application together. They want to collect as much information from as many residents who are interested in this opportunity. They're going to bundle all those residents into an application. The better an application, the higher the likelihood that that application is going to be approved and funded. So again, this being an optional program, there is not going to be a presumption that you as a homeowner are interested in participating. So what's most important is if you are interested in participating or interested in the program and don't know if you want to participate, is for you to reach out to Escambia County or Arcadis and express that interest. There's not going to be an assumption made that anyone who attended this meeting is interested in the process. So again, I highly recommend if you are interested, you want to find out more about it, contact Escambia County, contact Arcadis. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about the process and what's involved. There is a pre-application package that the residents will need to fill out if you're interested. We have some of those available for, for you here tonight that you can pick up, fill out and turn back in tonight, take it home, fill out, and send in at your leisure. The application is put together using available documentation. We have to come up with a cost estimate of here's the number of houses that are interested in participating in this, what is the estimated cost to acquire those properties? That's all we use, going to be de developed using existing information. Currently, there's not going to be appraisals done. It's using historical information, other sources of public information available to estimate the value of the homes that are included. Then that application is put together and sent on to the, to the agencies for consideration for funding. When you get through that process and assuming that the grant's approved, when it comes time to actually purchase a house, an actual appraisal is done at that point. Kelly? Next slide, please. I want to tell you a little bit about what the county has done since the storm. They've actually kind of gotten out ahead of all the other agencies. At this point, the county has sent out 194 letters to air residents in the area, making them aware of this opportunity. They received responses from 45. They've actually sent out 28 of the pre-application packages to residents, and 13 individuals have requested one-on-one -on -one meetings to further discuss that. Again, the county is well ahead of these other federal agencies in this process, the county is being proactive and going ahead, starting this process so that they have this information to hit the ground running when everything is set in motion. All right, so HMGFA application 
timeline and what are the next steps. We're a little bit uh, in a gray area right now. The federal agencies have not released their timeline, but what we can tell you is the county is going to have three years from the time that applications approved to acquire those properties. Once FDM has finalized their timelines, further updates will be coming. Right now, they haven't issued any of those. So, as far as the residents are, what are your next steps? Again, if you're interested in finding out about the program or participating in the program, you need to reach out to a county representative or our cadence and express that interest. You will not be included in the application if you do not make the effort to contact us. Again, if you're interested, you need to fill out the pre-application package. The pre-application package has a lot of documents in there. It's not intended to be scary. It's not intended to be complicated. However, if you do have questions, county staff is available to assist, as is our case. We're happy to talk to you and walk you through that process. Final slide, please. All right. That's really the, the, pro, the opportunity that's being presented to you at the current time. If you have any questions, certainly after tonight, feel free to contact Rob McCracken. She's with the county. You may also contact Kelly Red. She's with Arcadis. She knows this great opportunity inside now to be able to have, answer any questions you may have about the grant process and what's really involved. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the commissioner. All right. And just before we before we start taking some questions, uh, to reiterate one thing that that Stephen mentioned, um, one of the experiences from last time and again, that's that's the you know, the primary value of going through something like this is you do have some of the experiences from last time. Um, we had people that were, uh, that were interested that I think we could have, uh, we could have come to a, a mutual, you know, uh, uh, an agreement on the value of the property through the appraisals. And we were unable to have them participate in the HMGP because they weren't in the initial application that was made to FEMA. Um, that's something that we're, we're certainly trying to avoid that this time. So that, and that's one reason we wanted to have this very public meeting and, uh, and publicly make sure everyone is able to get their name and their address into the application that wants to. So that if, you know, a few ifs, if we do get the funding, if we can come to an agreement, uh, you know, about, about values, that, some, that the non-inclusion in the original grant won't be the reason that we're uh, not able to work something out with you or, uh, with you or your property. Um, all right, so now we will we'll open it up for questions, and if you might just uh, raise your hand, I'll, I'll try to acknowledge you and then ask you to uh, maybe go to the podium so, so that everyone can hear you, and I'll we'll try to figure out who's, who's the best person to answer it. Yes, ma'am. Letters were mailed out by Arcadis. I'm going to go ahead and ask Kelly to go ahead and respond. Kelly, the question was, what residences received the letters? It appears that several, many residents in the Bristol Park subdivision did not receive such letters. We mailed out letters to property owners who are on the creek and property owners who are not on the creek on both sides, so in the Bristol Park and Hatchbury Hills neighborhood, just based on a uh, GIS exercise. So if you did not get a letter, um, please let us know if you're interested in participating in the program. 
So, so the lack of receiving a letter doesn't doesn't preclude you from participating by any means. And well, of course. so the 194, um, I don't I don't remember off the top of my head from, you know, unfortunately seeing seeing the 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 map many times. That that greatly exceeds the number that were on that are on the creek bed. There's there's not nearly 194 properties that are actually on the creek. So it did go some portion out. I, I wasn't sure what the radius what the radius was off the creek bed that they actually went, but. If, um, if anybody wants to see the letter, wants a copy of the letter, we will certainly, tonight's a good time to indicate that and we'll, we'll certainly get you a copy of it. Um, yes, yes, ma'am. Can I just ask from here? I think everybody can hear me. Well, if, if you don't mind, it's, it's, it's being, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's also being. also the mic back this way so yeah. everyone doesn't have to walk up here. Right, definitely yeah, closer. and it's, yeah. it, it, it's being recorded for, multiple multiple uh services tonight so that's the only reason i ask you thank you okay, well i'm sorry i have two questions okay. first of all in the 2014 flood request to fema it was only the, the um the homes on the creek identified or was it all homes which one was it fema or was it our request that limited it to the creek homes Is there anybody from staff that could answer that? Was Joy? I mean, somebody that was here. Um, Ma'am, I, I believe that I believe that was done by FEMA, and I know that there. And unfortunately, we've we've had turnover in staff. So, if there are some things from 14 that I don't remember, we may have to, we may have to run some of that information down for you. If it's not something somebody has the institutional knowledge of that's here, I know Mr. White. I, I know was with. Mott McDonald at the time. Uh, you helped us at Pinewoods Presby Presbyterian Church when we did this type meeting over there, if I, re if I remember correctly. But um, I know when it came down to the funding for the approval for the funding, they, they being FEMA in this instance, they did prioritize properties that were on the creek. If we had not had enough willing properties on the creek, they gave feedback that they would have considered moving off the creek but they did prioritize those along the creek bed at that, for the actual disbursement of funding or for the properties that they would, uh, because even if we come to an agreement about the, value of, about the value of the property, it still has to be approved by FEMA as an acceptable expenditure of their money because it, it is in fact their money. But. Oh, and that's understandable. So I know the 6.9 million that was received last time, there wasn't enough to buy all 27 homes that were on the creek. So I didn't know if that was limited by FEMA or by the county's request. So if FEMA, there's always that chance then that FEMA can reduce the number. Oh, that yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The Florida Department of Economic Development had uh, done a $200 million purchase of homes in the Panama City area of the homes that flooded there. Are, is the county pursuing anything with the uh, Florida Department of Economic Opportunity? Kelly, Kelly, do you mind answering that with Arcadis? Kelly, did you hear that question? I think I did. Is the county pursuing funding with the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity? Correct. So the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity does have um, opportunities for disaster recovery funding. Typically, this funding is much slower to roll out than FEMA's. So um, that is something that the county can consider, but the timeline is, is further off than the FEMA grant. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I just add a little bit to that? Sure. So are they still going to look into the possibility, even though, because FEMA is going to take three years anyway? Yes, ma'am, I can answer that. Yes, we'll look into the possibility. Thank you. The, 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 the board, I'm certain the board, when requested, will give that direction. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Given the time frame for the grant process and with most of us being in the process of rebuilding now, 
having to do things like, say, an SBA home loan, is that going to adversely affect looking at the value of our homes and then on top of that adding an SBA loan, which has some restrictions, is that going to limit our opportunity to participate in this program? Um, based, based on experience, no. I, I can tell you, you know, you, you try to you try to assess the efficiency of the expenditure of the funds, and um, if, again, historically, if, uh, if we had had the funds in hand or allocated shortly after the flood in 14, um, we would have, I uh, feel certain, we would have spent the money in a, in a, in a different manner. Um, there were a lot of homes that took a long time to rebuild as, as we're going through now we could get a lot more length out of our out of the dollars if we were buying gutted homes or homes that were in various stages of disrepair rather than once they've been completely renovated uh, sure. rather than once they've been completely renovated uh, it's one reason why you know we only were able to purchase 18 homes previously um, you know if we could have paid you know a half to two-thirds uh, for those homes before they were completely renovated, then we could have gotten a lot more length out of the dollars. And, and in those cases, um, the liens, whether they be SBA liens or mortgages against the property, none of that, none of that came into play with the appraisals. It was strictly, uh, it was strictly the appraisals and was the homeowner acceptable with it. Um, I can tell you from, again, previous experience, we did have a couple of folks that appraisals came in um, under what they, what they owed cumulatively on the home, and they, you know, uh, elected not to participate rather than having to try to take cash to, to close to participate. So, you know, the appraisals don't take that into account, but I know reality does. So, thank you. Um, yes, ma'am, in the red sweater. Yes, ma'am. There's a mic. I'm sorry. There's a podium directly to the, to your, to your left. Oh. Okay, uh, 2128 Dog Track Road. I'm, 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 I'm sure that can be memorialized, and, um, and I would expect. Uh, I, I've been waiting. Well, I would expect that you can, you know, I would expect you to have some degree of communication this week, and we'll try to see. What, and, and I'm sure with the county leadership here that you'll, that you'll get some type of response and try to see if we can and help mitigate, mitigate what's going on with you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, in the purple. I'm gonna stay here. I have I have a big mouth, so I know everybody. <laughs> I like to know if the same uh, if the same opportunity is gonna be afforded to the residents that live on Fowler Avenue, right by Eight Mile Creek, that have suffered at least two floods, 2014 and 2020, over the past six years, and no one at the county seems to be concerned about the suffering of the residents that live there that had to go through two floods. Yes, ma'am. What, what's, did you fill out a card? Yes, I did. You did, okay. Did you indicate what your issue is on the card? Yes, sir. All right, well, what's your address? So, 8801 Fowler Avenue. Okay. Um, thank you, and let us, let, let us look into it. I'm not as familiar with, with, what's, with what exactly is, is going on there. I'm familiar with, um, uh, with the area, and I know that I know that you've had flooded, had flooding. There's not necessarily an HMGP. These are some of the pictures. Yes, ma'am. Of the water up past the door knob. Okay. Um, Both times. All right. Well. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Got pictures from 2014. Okay. Don't. And 2020. Yeah, but good. I'm gonna have two. Get to the first one. 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 Get to
Oh, okay. Okay, take out the property line from you can't tell the property line from the uh, Eight Mile Creek because when the water backs up from all of the other holding ponds and flow down the street, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a swamp. All right, ma'am. Ma'am. Thank you. Uh, if you will, my, my, my aide is going to take a picture of what you've brought just so that we can, so that we can have it as well. And, and we will, someone will get back with you, ma'am. And I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Yes, sir. I live on a personal uh, in Bristol Park on Woodbury Drive. Yes, sir. 2014, my home was flooded. It's an extensive renovation. This time around, uh, thank God, the, the water line did not come in the house and flooded my garage. Well, my question is, I heard a lot of talk about after 14, there was some remediation, building retention ponds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I heard that after this flood, and I would like to know the status of that 2021, that project was supposed to, if I'm correct, was supposed to be implemented. Now that would affect my decision if the engineer says this is gonna help people not in the back of Bristol Park, because I know the water comes up pretty high back there, but for those of us that live uh, closer to the front where the flood is, in, is severe, whether that those, this flood mitigation plan would help those, and it would affect my decision whether I would apply for a grant or not, leaving money for other people. Are you on Woodbreeze? Is that where you're saying? Woodbreeze, okay. right. So there are, and um, government moves very slowly. I mean, it just painfully slowly. Um, the BP Restore, we, the county was allocated some funds through BP Restore and each commissioner was able to put forth two projects into, into the pipeline to be approved. Uh, both projects that I submitted were related to 11 Mile Creek. One related to the creek bed restoration, one related to the uh, to additional retention pond construction and expansion. Um, that was in 2015 when that application was, when that, those applications were made. Um, as of the hurricane, we st I still had no approval from Treasury to be able to move forward with those projects. Uh, within about a month, we did get an approval in November, I believe in November we got an approval uh, to start moving forward with the creek bed restoration, which, was a, which is a very big deal. Um, so that, pro that project, uh, the 11 mile creek bed restoration, that project is moving forward. There's, uh, additionally, there's off of West Roberts Road, it's going to be where West Roberts turns to the south and then on the west side of it where uh, there's a 10 acre pond site that is uh, going to basically run up to the creek. It's, on the, it's going to be on the creek that's south of Kingsfield but north of the 297-97 intersection. That's going to be a seven and a half acre pond that's going to get some water out of the, that's going to get, I mean that's a, real, that's a pretty large pond, it's going to get quite a bit of water out of the creek uh, which will certainly help the flow down uh, further along the creek bed and to residents like yourself and many of you. Um, there's also at the intersection of 297 and 97, there's kind of a wooded area on the north side of that where the caution light is or where the light is. And uh, there's a pond on Mount Batten or where you turn into Bowling Green into that neighborhood just north on 297. Um, we have an agreement with Farm Hill to, uh, to buy, they bought two acres, a little over two acres to put a lift station. They're not gonna need the whole parcel. The county's gonna, the county's gonna purchase what they don't use for their lift station to tr certainly try to expand that pond uh, as, you turn into, as you turn into Mount Batten. I don't think any one thing is gonna be the solution, but hopefully the multiple projects will be, um, is Brent here, Brent Wolf? Yes. Okay, Brent. Brent Whiff, yeah, do you mind coming forward and, and so this is Brent Whiff with the county and uh, he's gonna have, you know, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more professional comments related to the restore projects and, and where they are in the pipeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and they're, they're, they are legitimately working their way through the pipeline through purchasing and those things. I mean, we're, we're, relatively close to seeing 
shovels turn dirt and those real benefits, but Brent? So, yeah, yes, that is correct. You, you hit almost all the, the high points on that, Commissioner. Uh, we do have the, the project off West Roberts Road is at 100% design. We're still waiting on one permit there, and we're sorting out the construction funding on that project. The, the storm uh, water pond off 97297A, uh, that project we're waiting for Farm Hill uh, Utility to finalize their design, uh, which they're, they're, they're doing right now, and then we'll be able to acquire that property and, and probably move much quicker on that site. Uh, and as the commissioner mentioned, we finally have uh, approval back from uh, Treasury on the, the, the stream project that, that would be that, that area, that, that portion within, actually within the stream between the neighborhoods there from uh, 297A down to uh, Interstate uh, 10, all of those projects. The one other project, uh, as the commissioner mentioned, uh, the, the two original projects, there actually is a, another batch of projects which additional funding to identify more of those pond sites, to acquire those properties, to, to do the, the necessary engineering and design. Like the commissioner said, it's not any one project that's going to be the solution. It's really, it's really uh, all the projects working really in concert. So. Well, I appreciate you uh, working this for us, but before you leave, is this really going to do something if it <coughs> We have a lot of development going on, and we see pipes coming down and, and dumping out right by the bridge there. Uh, before, and a lot of developments going on is is what uh, new developments required to do in holding ponds. Is that going to uh, result in uh, uh, less less flooding, or is that going to contribute to additional? Sir, I mean, I, I answer certainly anything that's new. I mean, you know, Brent is a, a really environmental guy and it's helping a lot with the restore, but anything that's new, that's new developments, I mean, their, their stormwater, part of the approval process is they're supposed to, they have, you know, they have stamped engineers that are saying 100% of the stormwater that they're creating is staying on their, is staying on their property, on their project property. So it's not supposed, it's not supposed to have any more negative impact on anybody that's there. I can see that there, I mean, <laughs> realistically, there is a lot of skepticism that comes with that. So, and that's why we're trying to do these other things that are, you know, that are related to trying to better the current situation. Um, um, you know, those, there's a tremendous amount of money that's been spent on 297 and 97 both for widening the roads and all the drainage, you know, like you're talking about the drainage systems that you see along the sides of the road that's great they're they're keeping a lot you know a lot of those are keeping they're keeping water out of the neighborhoods um, for a large degree but it's diverting it to the creek bed i mean that's where it's taking it to the bridge that you're talking about I mean, you're absolutely right um, you know one one no two storms or no two occurrences are ever going to be the same but one thing that was different about the water movement this time was we didn't have the water movement from 97 south through the main part of the road, the main, the main Bristol Park Road, like we did in 14. Uh, I'm not saying there was none, but there wasn't water coming off of 97 in the same manner that it was before. A lot of water was moving along those, along those huge drainage pipes. But that did also put a lot of water into the creek and um, so, but yeah, it, it should certainly be a benefit. Ma'am? Yes. This is my daughter's house. She lives in uh, Pinebrook Circle. I'm sure everybody who has to go past her house to get into that housing development back there knows their house. Because mm -hmm. this road floods every time it rains. It has a great big hill that comes down. My daughter has been been complaining ever since she bought the house, which at one time was considered a non-flood zone when she bought the home. And then right afterwards, you all changed it to a flood zone. She repeatedly, repeatedly asked you all to take care of the water situation coming down Pinebrook Circle, and you told her it was her responsibility. Then you put a housing development right behind her backyard Brighton off of 297A, 
There is no holding pond for 25 to 30 houses in this housing development. And all that runoff, which is above her grave, is running right down into her backyard. Mm -hmm. I would like to know, when is the county going to start doing a little bit better job with regards to rezoning? And will my daughter be responsible for the mortgage on this house now? Because it's a total loss that you need to demolish it and put the whole new pond there. <laughs> All right, please, uh, please don't applaud. I, I certainly empathize with empathize with your situation, and um, uh, that area, there are a lot of challenges, and you know, I have current have current as in last week, two weeks ago, last month, two months ago, we have challenges in that in that Pinebrook community. Uh, we've been unable to come up with a really good solution. Uh, we had a project that would have done creek bed restoration where the creek comes through between Carmody Hill and, uh, uh, and Pine Brook. We got very little participation from those that own the creek. There's no public interest currently in the creek in that portion. Um, the, what I'm saying is the property owners own and they abut each other from the north to the south. So the county has no current public interest at all, not even a narrow public interest through there. We got, uh, a very low participation rate in the easements that we needed to be able to do the project. So we've had to try to go other directions and have not been, not been extremely successful. We're still in negotiations with ECUA where they have a, they have a lift station and some, uh, they have some infrastructure as you turn into Pine Brook, but right before you get to the circle, um, we're in negotiations to try to pick up three quarters of an acre from them there that would provide some degree of help. Um, but we've not been able to really come up with a good solution. I have, and, you know, I have a number of friends in the area and I have some genuinely unhappy people and um, I need some, you know, I need an idea from, you know, internally that comes forward and says, if we do this and if we can secure this funding, then we can provide a real benefit. Um, we were offered some property from a development that's north of you that, uh, you know, as a layperson, I thought would be a big benefit. It was 10 or 12 acres. And uh, I, when, you, when the engineers looked at it, they didn't find that that acreage, even though it's large, would be a lot of value because it didn't have, it, the topography didn't mean that it would be much of a benefit. I'm very concerned about your area. I'm actively trying to find a solution. I, I don't know exactly what that is. I've talked to two, two of what would be your daughter's neighbors that own vacant property in the area have uh, been unable to find someone that's wanting to sell to the county to uh, try to put some infrastructure on there for whatever reason. Um, but I am committed to trying to, trying to find something that will improve it. I'm sorry for what's happened. Yes, sir, in the, the checkered jacket, yes, sir. No, sir. Mm. Okay, so no, sir. we've got differences in there. The other thing is, when these developers come in, just like I'm in, in the Crystal Woods, when you know the ground don't perk to start with, out of all these contractors and housing developers, the, the inspectors from the county and whatnot, how do they let them build things when they know the ship is sinking to start with? I've often wondered that. Yes, sir, I, I, I appreciate your question. That's not what the engineers end up, that's not what the county engineers nor the private engineers that, that do the work on the developments end up saying. That they, they have plans that show that, I'm a certified financial planner by trade, I'm not an engineer, and you know, on some level, myself as well as the rest of the board, I mean, we are, well, candidly, none of us are, are engineers. Uh, you know, we have to depend on what professionals tell us to some degree, even with skepticism when we have two, you know, if we have a private engineer say it's going to work and I have a county engineer say it's going to work, that's, it's, it's, it's very difficult to find any reason to not be able to support that. And uh, nobody, 
you know, one of the things that we changed after 14, uh, previously the developments had to, they had to have, uh, they had to be able to manage a 25 year storm as part of the, as part of the development review. Now they have to be able to manage a 100 year storm. Um, that's something the county implemented in either late 2014 or early 2015, which has hopefully, I mean, it's, it's difficult to know because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risk that you can't really ascertain what the impact was, but I think even a, as a layperson, I could say it certainly has had an impact and a positive impact by having them have to be engineered to a 100-year storm rather than a 25-year storm. That's got to be a good thing. It has to be, but I certainly understand your frustration. Um, yes, sir, in the blue shirt, long sleeves, and I see you in the back. Thanks. Quick question. Will participation in a FEMA backed flood insurance program prohibit us from taking part in this if we choose to? No, sir. Does FEMA underwrite all the flood insurance now? No, sir. Thank it will not. Yes, sir, from the back. Yes, sir. If I understood the engineer correctly, you said that the, there was approval for pre bed improvements. My question is, what specific improvements are you going to make to the creek bed so that the water flows better than it has? So the, the project, the, the funding has been approved to select a design firm or a design engineer for the project. So we don't necessarily have a design yet. But there are two things that could be done. Uh, we could open up the, the creek so that it would allow water to flow. Uh, a little bit better. Uh, of course, you have to balance that with the, the residents that live downstream of the creek. The other thing that you could do is you could widen the floodplain to give give the water a, an area to stage in the creek that are along the creek rather in people than in people's homes. So those would be generally two of the ideas that, that we, we will look at as part of the design. And there's a and there's a lot of acreage to be able to widen it as you get there's the development once you get a little bit south of the initial part south of the bridge where you know some of the homes are relatively close to the creek. Once you get a little bit south of there, there are not really homes that are that close to the creek. There's a lot of acreage there. So I think the widening of the the widening of where water moves currently would have I think that's a, a very it seems like a very efficient and feasible possibility because there's an opportunity to be able to go potentially a couple hundred feet wide on either on either side of the creek bed in a lot of that area and given the fact that it's currently only 20 or 25 feet wide that that would seem that would seem to have a, a large impact follow-up question are there yeah. any plans by the county to clean it up now so we we had drones go immediately or within a week or two of the flood because i, I heard stories um you know about refrigerators being there and dryers i mean you know garbage a bunch of stuff um, you know, trees being downed, those kind of things in the, in the creek bed that's inhibiting water from moving. Um, that's not what the drones showed. The drones didn't show debris and those things. We did have a number of trees that were down. Those trees have been manually, uh, we can't, you can't, I don't have a tremendous environmental background as far as my, my, that pool of knowledge is not necessarily deep. But there are a lot of, I guess, very stringent restrictions going in the creek bed and doing things, especially with any kind of me uh, mechanized uh, equipment. So we had to manually go and have uh, work crews remove the trees that were down in the creek bed, and that was that was done over a, a few week period, uh, starting maybe a couple weeks after the storm. So what what I'm told now, there's not impediments, um, just as a as Again, as a layperson, if you think about how deep the creek used to be or the way the water used to move in there, you know, if you have a bathtub that's half full of sand, it only holds so much water before it overflows. And, or a pipe that's half full of sand, I mean, if you think about the creek being a pipe, it moves water, so maybe it's somewhat like that, or a half pipe. If it's so many feet full of sand, it can only move so much water before it's over the creek bed and it's into the, you know, it's east and west there. Um, I would like to just be able to go and dredge all the sand out, be able to move water. Apparently we can't do that. I wanted to do that five years ago. That's not something that, that's just not something we can do, I don't guess. So that would mean to me then that that won't be done? No, of, of, uh, no, that is something that can happen.
but it can't happen the way that I would want to do it, which is just go do it and pay for it. I mean, and you know these these you know these, these failures are mine. They're, the board is supportive. I mean, I can't do anything necessarily on my own. The board, at every step of the way, has been supportive of, of uh, funding requests and project requests and those things to try to improve the area. Um, no, I, I do think that's a feasible outcome is to have is to get that sand out of there and widen the creek bed, but it's just not something that we could go and do like I would have wanted to go and do it because it's a it's a relatively simple thing that's done other places, but we can't do it in that creek. And so no FEMA money will be appropriated for that. No, I, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we couldn't do it years ago like I would have wanted to. I still can't go and do it right now, but I think that we can get a permit to do it through this process. But it takes it takes this process to be able to get that permit to do it. The gentleman there just uh, asked my primary question, uh, yes. so I won't be redundant there. Um, just for my own sake, uh, if I could ask for a show of hands of, of everybody who went through the last flood in 2014. And 2004. We're a very tight-knit community. We look at each other as family. Uh, we help each other when Disaster strikes. That's what I love about Bristol Park and the surrounding community. I love many of y'all. I've got to know a lot of new friends. We're a community that believes in hope. We have uh, been hoping for many years. Uh, unfortunately, that hope has fallen short. My questions and comments really are for the future of my family and your families. Because it seems to be a redundant issue. We've been here before, people. And I have not a lot of confidence that we won't be back in this room again. And I think a lot of you share that sentiment. So you're speaking to a group of people that don't want feasibilities or these are proposals or these are things that may happen in the next decade, may happen in the next 15 years. Um, unless I misunderstood, I, I heard things work very slowly. The funds that came down to our neighborhood, and that's how I'm looking at it, from the original storm has come in so slowly that we didn't see the positive impact from so I know a lot of people want to know, to the penny, where did that money go? But not just that, but as we s contemplate selling our homes, these are, this, this is more than brick and mortar. Our kids grow up in these houses. Our grandkids grow up in these houses. It's not an easy decision to come in and say, hey, we're gonna send out a petition, we need you to sign it, and give all the promises that may or may not happen. For the most part, I wanna say, the reason we saw so many hands is because we wanna stay in our homes. We love the area, we love our neighbors. We don't wanna uproot and leave. So what is being done to fortify our neighborhood immediately so that you can leave these families in their homes to raise their kids and not uproot us and move us out. We love our area. Now that's from my heart. Now I have a pragmatic question as we are here to gain information and not just throw dogs. Oh, and that's okay too. My pragmatic question is because I know the data's got to be out there. You can quickly shoot me off to a website if you need me to. But I am curious, of, of those that did sell their home through the low-balling and, and the back and forth and all of that that I know personally happened, what was the average sell price for the home that did go through the FEMA process? so that we can go home with a dollar amount in our head, average, 
so we can start truly thinking about these proposals. What is the average sell of that house from the previous process sure. that you put us through? Um, I, I don't. I don't know that off the top of my head. It was eighteen or so. Seven. Eighteen. Eighteen properties. So. So there were 18 properties acquired. Uh, I mean, averaging 18 sales prices is not a, that's not a Herculean effort, so it won't take very long. I don't know what the average is. Um, just anecdotally, my guess would be 240, 250,000 in that ballpark. That would be my guess. Um, but, but we'll see. I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Any below 200, but that that may be that may be incorrect, and so yeah, if you, you can calculate off that spreadsheet what it is, and if you, well, you, you I'm if, not up here wanting to give out any misinformation either. Yeah. So I, I would appreciate the validation of that number. Yeah, you can have this. You can have the spreadsheet. It was sent to uh, to another one of your to another one of your residents. So. But it won't take, if you give us five or 10 minutes, let her calculate what the average sales price is and we can get that pretty easily. Um, and, but, and to your other question, you know, it's still realistically, maybe a little bit early to have the meeting about the HMGP grant process for FEMA because like the gentleman asked, do we have approval? We, we don't have approval and we may not have that approval that funding exists to be able to tap into for, uh, for some number of months. But along the hope, the hope aspect, I, you know, it is a process. We are going to apply. I want people to have the hope that if they want to participate, they're going to have maybe an opportunity to participate. But as much as anything, you know, it's been three months, three months and a couple of weeks since the storm. I'm you know, not going to be able to, you know, it's been long enough. You know, even with a pandemic, I needed to, I needed to get you together. Even if the majority of folks are, you know, to throw darts, they shoot darts. That's that's okay. That's my that's again that's my that's my problem, my responsibility. But um, along the lines of the other projects that we're talking about, the creek bed restoration and, and you know pond construction, additional pond construction, those are those are dollars that are real dollars that do exist. So those are not um, that's not hypothetical. Those are dollars that do exist. It's just a matter of how quickly we can get some of the funds deployed to do the work. Um, that's not something that's gonna take additional FEMA approval or anything like that. So the average purchase price was 305. 5.2 million, 17 properties. So what was that? 5.2 million, 17 properties. Yeah, so for, for, yeah, for everybody's information, the average sales price of the 17 homes, I guess it was 18 parcels, but it contained 17 actual structures was three hundred and five thousand dollars. I knew it was relatively high, but what per square foot? Did you have the average foot? that's gonna honestly that's the spreadsheet that we have is address and price. That's gonna take a little bit longer to put together, but it's not some again, it's only seventeen structures, that's not insurmountable, but you might have to I don't know if you put your email address on the form on your form, but what what was what was your what was your name? Oh, hey, buddy, I can't, the masks make it very difficult to see you. No, okay. The ones I looked at in Ashbury were around $100 a square foot. Is what, is what they was did. it? I didn't look on our side of the okay. park side, but I looked at those. All right, so let it. Really, the, the, the number is not what you want for total average price. You want square footage. Like. Sure. And so that's what tells the tell. So, if you're coming 100 square foot, $100 a square foot right now, you're in the hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, the sales price ended up, you know, because the majority, as you can see with the price being 300, the majority of times that takes, uh, that took two appraisals, anything over 250,000 requires two county appraisals. So, I mean, appraisals, and they're done by people that are in our community, they're not farmed out to people that do national stuff for FEMA, they're people that you know and you go to church with and that you interact with. So these appraisals, they took into the, at that time, they took into account what the current market was. And now if the appraisals were done, they would be taking into account what the current market is, which is different than what it was three or four years ago, certainly. Um, but I apologize, Mike. It's, it's, again, it's hard to see with masks on, people leaving that you know. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. And the gentleman that was talking about family, 
And my husband and I feel like family in Versa Park as well, but we live on 1224 Whippoorwill Drive. And that house has flooded five times. Twice with the previous owner, three times with us. And we just want to get our home out there because like all of you, we have reached out to the county for help. And there was one gentleman who always returns my calls, and I won't mention his name, but he has, from the county, has said, Ms. Stout, there's nothing you can do to prevent the flooding of your home. That will always happen. It's not if, it's when. And we are so discouraged because, like this gentleman said, it's our home. We raised, you know, five children in that home. We have grandbabies now. And we love our home. We've been there for 20 years. And, you know, like all of you, three times now we've flooded. And it, and it, you know, no one ever talks about from the county or from, you know, the higher, higher ups, you know, what it does to us personally, That's right. the anxiety, the stress, right. the, you know, we're, we're all working and, you know, is, is there an end? There isn't one. Because we just know, like I tell my handyman who's, you know, putting up all the, you know, the sheetrock and mud and the paint and everything else. Oh, you know, it just happened again. So, I, I mean, and that's horrible because that's an our investment. You, we, we're putting money into that home. Um, again, like you said, we, we love the area. We love our neighbors. And I hope all of you include us too, because I'll tell you what, every time Bristol Park floods, we flood. And where we're situated, we have wetlands in the back, on uh, the side of us and in the back of us. And we sit in a low area of the neighborhood. And that water comes from 10 miles, 10 miles behind wetlands and we just get saturated. I mean, that water comes up and you never know how high it's gonna get in the house. And we're flood, um, quote, no flood zone. Right, yes. no flood zone. <coughs> right. Um, but, I mean, people come to look at the house because, and they take pictures. You know, and just the devastation. And, it, and it's horrible, just like Bristol Park. We always go down to Bristol Park right after a flood because, you know, you guys, though, I mean, you get, back in 2014, you guys got hit really, really hard. And, I mean, we had 28 inches in our home. But you guys, some of you had the uh, eight feet, yeah. I mean, but, um, you know, I, I, just, I just hope the county, like, sees us. You know that we want to get noticed. We want we want help. We and you know we don't want you know help three years from now because yeah. God knows what can happen in three years. We'll flood again. Yes, ma'am. And what happens to us financially? I got another. We got another SBA loan. That's two now. And how can we ever get ahead? And we're both working, working people, and you know raising our families and stuff. And but. The burden, the financial burden, is just awful. Yeah. And it didn't help when you built the bridge. Well, yeah, Stefani. Once you built that bridge up, you narrowed it. Yeah. So now the water flow backs up. My yard right now, you go in my yard. Three, about half of my yard is underwater. Still in water. I can't mow my yard no more. Tractor it. Yeah. I put a pool up, above ground pool, this last time, it was six inches before it was into my pool, five feet. Wait, how, how can you have a, a okay. mic? I, I got videos. The street out front of the house is flooded. Oh, you can't get in or out? You can't get in or out. When, when it, there's hurricanes, floods come through, there's no way for any sort of ambulance or anyone to come through. That's totally gone. You gotta wait. You yes, ma'am. So, I mean, it, it's, it's just awful. I'm like, you know, we're Bristol Park. All right. so well, there's got to be some help. Yes, ma'am. Well, we've made a note of your name and address, and uh, you know, you certainly when you know certainly when you do projects, you 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 know that are seen as a that are seen as a good thing. You know, that's the I mean, hopefully 
that's the only reason any government's going to undertake a project is, a, is that it's going to be a good, it's going to be for the public good. You're using public money, so you hope it's for the public good. Um, the Stefani Bridge project was, uh, you know, was one we certainly. The road count, the road time, the road department said that we, we know, we've heard the old complaints, and that should have never happened. Well, that's. And then also, I want to just mention that we've been told by the county representative. Uh, back in 1971, 72, when that house was built, it should have never been built there because no, it it's on a floodplain, and those park tasks, they knew about it, but they still built there. Yes, ma'am. So I, I, what can we do with the county? The county issued, had to issue those permits. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Look, we'll, we've got your name and address, and, and I'll be happy to interact with you. My, one of my good friends and my kindergarten teacher lives on Whipper Will. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. So. Oh, okay. Well, we never see you guys. <laughs> so, thank you yes. for listening. I mean, it's only a quarter mile through the back of the corner here. I mean, I, That's I, it's, right. it's, it's yeah. yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. And uh, I promise we'll interact with you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's not I have a big mouth. There's a there's a microphone right behind you if you don't mind. Um, did you have an ice cream? Oh, yes, ma'am. Super. <laughs> um, I have a 12-year-old daughter. And when the question came up, what do you want for Christmas, it was, I want to go home, Mom. I want to go home. Did, did my classmates, are they home? Um, are they living there? I understand that you got a three-year plan and stuff, but what if a hurricane happened? This year. You know, I worked till 2 o'clock in the morning. I worked eight hours a day, 2 o'clock in the morning, doing my house so that I can make a promise to be home for Christmas. Now, am I going to have to go through this next Christmas? Or am I, are we going to be out of sight, out of mind, once the meeting is over? What, what's the plan? What's going to be the follow up to this meeting? Yes, ma'am. Uh I think it's very realistic to think that if we're here a year from now, you know, if we're in the same venue a year from now, that that you will see that there will be tangible, there will be tangible uh, benefits on the ground. There will be improvements that are done within that time frame. Not everything won't be done within that time frame, but there will finally be some work done if you fast forward through that. Um, you know. It, Legislating or governing during a pandemic is, is it's challenging. I mean, it, it's just made getting people together, you know, a, a little bit more of a challenge. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I take very seriously and I, I take a lot of pride in is, you know, since, since being elected, you know, I've done town hall meetings in this venue many times, but, you know, similar to this, every quarter at least, and then additionally as we've had things that have come up over the years, which we've had a number of things, as, as, as many of you know. Um, and I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have anybody screen, screen the questions, or you don't have to tell what you're going to ask to somebody before you get the microphone or whatever, and you take questions, whether it's related to exactly what the meeting's about or not, and allow people an opportunity to, you know, to say, to say what's on their mind and ask their questions. Um, you know, I feel like that's the best way to, to, you know, for me to be accountable to what goes on, you know, to what goes on at these meetings. Because if you have, like yourself or somebody comes and they say, well, you know, we'll get you that information next week. Or, you know, it might take a month, but we'll get that back to you. You know, I'll have another town hall in, you know, 90 days. And when that person comes to that next meeting and they say, somebody said they were going to get back with me and they didn't. Or you lied and you said you were going to do this and you didn't. That's not a very that's not a very good uh, that's not a very good outcome for someone that's going to have that's going to have these meetings regularly. So that's the I mean that's that's the best guarantee that I can that I can give you that you know your feedback will be taken seriously and um, um, and we will do the things that we say we're going to do. Sometimes it would be easier to say exactly what folks want to hear, which would have a very good outcome tonight, which would probably not have a very good outcome. Uh, in three months or six months when those things just didn't come to fruition. So I try not to say just what would make people happy tonight because, you know, I'm from here and I plan on being around here and I don't want people to be able to say, well, you said you were going to do this and then you didn't do that. So I try to maintain expectations, but 
do the best work that we can. Um, yes, and in, in the I'm, I'm sorry, in the back there was one, and then. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, is that something that you're aware of? And do you have more information regarding that? Personally, no. I mean, anecdotally, um, you know, there have been, you know, some of your some of your neighbors have been there since I want to say '91 or '92 was the first was the first phase along the main drag, um, and you know, they've told me about the historical, you know, about historical flooding going back to. Um, so I'm 45, so going, going back to maybe when I was in college, you know, in the mid-90s, I think there might have been a bad flood in 94 well, or 98. Was something that the county actually studied and realized that that was a flood, you know, a flood drainage basin and just didn't, you know, it was some overlooked information when they decided to allow this neighborhood to be developed? Or is that something? I'm, I'll, I'll be happy to, to try to see what data um, the floodtrends.org is using, yeah. but I'm not sure. I, 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 I've never seen that study. I would be well. I should say I mean, I'd never, I never. I was going to say I'd never be surprised, but I, that's I would. Something you look into. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe give us a, yeah. A definitive response to because right now restoring the creek is not going to do anything for you know our immediate situation. And I'm not staying in the neighborhood. We're going to sell the house to somebody, and obviously we have to disclose that information. But sure. you know, ethically, I feel terrible about selling that. You know, selling the house to somebody that you know I know it's gonna get flooded again. Yeah. I mean, I had a life raft. I got into an argument with my aunt two weeks before the storm because she wanted me to deflate a life raft that I had in our attic. She was yelling at me like, you know, it's not gonna flood again. You don't know more about it. I'm like, we're not deflating that raft because this house is gonna flood again. You know, based on you know previous occurrences and stuff. You know, so you know these are the kind of situations yes. that everybody's having in our neighborhood. You know. We definitely, you know, how do we ethically sell our house if, you know, we don't want to deal with this again? Very, uh, very fair question. Uh, yeah, well, and Sam. we'll have to, well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very, very fair question doesn't mean that there's necessarily an answer. Yeah. And I'll, I will certainly look into what, I mean, to, you know, what's on that website. I, I mean, I have hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical equipment. Every time my house floods, you know, it gets damaged. And, you know, now if we didn't have flood insurance during the first flood, we had it this time, but, you know, there's a max on flood insurance, like right. personal content to your house. And, you know, it's nowhere near the amount of money we need to replace these things, you know? Yes, sir. And what do we do? We will certainly look into what the county might have known when they originally... We by waiting six years? You said three years till we have, like, even, you know, design or well, you know, some kind of plan, proposed plan. So the, the HMGP grant... The FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. I mean, it's a. It's is it going to take three years to get the money, though, or is it going to be three years till the design? Or they're looking for a company that's going to maybe like. Do the, design, but. the the HMGP process, based on 2014, we had three years to acquire the property from the award of the grant. The award of the grant was, I believe, the late summer, early fall of, of 15. And so we had through 18 to, you know, to expend, you know, to expend the money. And um, so that does 
give you some idea of at least of the timeline. One, there was a, one additional thing going on I, I, I neglected to mention earlier. Um, many of you know the, the interstate, uh, interstate was closed for some period of time this, during this event. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I've requested and that DOT has been supportive of, there's an expansion of I-10 that's, uh, that's being designed right now, a capacity to have more capacity on the area of I-10 that's, that's very close to your neighborhood. And they are incorporating a greater stormwater management plan into that, into that redesign for more capacity um, that will move more water along, you know, underneath the interstate. Because anytime the, you know, the interstate was shut down for three or four hours after the, you know, after the hurricane that morning, Federal Highway and DOT take that very serious. So that's uh, an additional. So are you guys exploring other options that aren't going to take as long? I mean, is there other options for? So the, B the, restore, the restore project, the BP restore projects that are related to the pond construction, which is ongoing now. I mean, that, 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 that process is at 100% design, and I would hope to go out to construction for that, you know, within 60 or 90 days. Go out for bid on the pond within 60 or 90 days. That pond construction is something that, that's, so, so that will happen sometime this calendar year. There are things that are going to happen more, more quickly than others. The creek bed restoration, that's about to go out for design, which is not construction, but design part. So that will lag that pond construction, but it will also happen much sooner than the HMGP process will. But like I said, I, I've, HMGP process is something that a lot of people have expressed interest in. I wanted to have an opportunity for them to have a forum and a way to get on the list and put their properties into that pool. But um, the HMGP is not going to be the first thing that we see on the ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Against the wall. Thank you. So there's a packet. There are some packets that are here this evening. Are they on the back tables? I think they'll be available at the sign-in table with Arcadis after. Okay. So yeah. they'll be yeah. outside, I believe. Okay. So there'll be a sign-in table with Arcadis, which is going to be the county. Arcadis is the county vendor, county contractor, kind of managing the FEMA grant for us. There's going to be an application packet and a table that you can pick that physical packet at, up at, and um, potentially complete there if you'd like or. Tonight. Yes. Where yes. The are they available now? I mean, at I, the end of the meeting, it'll be out the, the young lady from Arcadis that was answering some questions earlier is who is, I think, going to be managing or at the table or working at the table. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so she's in the back answering questions. When, when this part's done, then we'll break to where the tables are. Thank you. Any other any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to say good evening to my neighbors. I, a lot of you I've not seen. A lot of you may have heard from me by being on the internet for the neighborhood website that I'm on. Usually, what I try to do is be the voice of reason. And sitting in both of my chairs, I kind of had a little trouble with that tonight. I want to start off with a model that I use. I don't want you to necessarily agree with me. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. That seems to be missing in this forum. I've heard that this happened before the pandemic. Yes, the pandemic came along and made things hard, but I'm looking at some of the faces, and they're maturely seasoned faces, so they've been through this experience before the pandemic came. So we can't say the pandemic did it. It's the pandemic's fault. We have to look at history and learn what not to repeat and what not to do and make it better so there is a future. That I do see. I wrote down a couple of things, and I'd like to try to go through them as quickly as I can. I'm from New York. I'm not from here, 
That's what gets me in trouble. <laughs> so, in this process, I wanted to know, and maybe somebody can kind of take notes, and then I can get through it, and then we can answer the questions. But I wanted to know if there are people that are in special programs with their mortgages, such as veterans, the disabled. Does this process work to help them if they're interested in selling their home because they have to get special permissions to come up from their mortgages? Yes. As well as the insurance companies. Um, and some mortgage companies, um, if you may have bad credit, just, just saying, putting it out there, because I haven't heard a lot about the money. And I'm sorry, but I'm sitting over there and I'm going, what about the money? That's where I'm at right now, where's the money? Renovations versus repairs. There are some people that have flooded that are kind of doing both at the same time, and I'm wondering how that impacts their ability to sell. Because if they don't repair the house, they have a less value. If they're already in the hole, how do they get out of the hole? Because they got to repair the wall, the rug, the, the ceiling, the roof. There's neighbors of mine that have tarps on their houses right now. Federal aid, disaster relief. Is there any other money that we can get to help these homeowners because I swear to God, every time it rains, my butt cheeks clench together and I hope that my neighbors don't flood. <laughs> Commissioner, I wanted to ask you personally, sir, how long you've been on this job? Eight years. Ten years. Eight years, but yeah. And there were people before you, and what I always come back to is, like there's a seal on that wall, there's a seal in courtrooms that say, in God we trust. Why couldn't we have that trust before you even showed up? There's a problem somewhere, and I'm not saying it starts with you. I appreciate you being here tonight, but we've got to start going to where the problems are. Are the problems the inspectors cutting corners? Where they're building these houses and saying, oh, it's okay, it's all good, and next thing you know, the Grand Canyon floated in your house. I'm just going to call it like it is. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> they can come find me. Because I ain't said nothing political, nothing racial, nothing sexual. I'm telling it like it needs to be told, and that's when I'm going to get in trouble. So it's only going back to where I was at. I left off with inspectors. I wanted to talk to you about possibly having a board. Because one thing that I see uh, with the incoming administration is they want to have people have a seat at the table. I don't see any of these homeowners that have a seat at the table. It's people talking to them and telling them what is going to happen, but there's nobody that has brought them into the process and talked to them so that they can spread the word and share their experiences and say, this is what's happening. I personally don't want to see just the commissioner. I would like to see people that are having this experience be represented and called in and stand at arms and say, let me tell you my experience so you can understand it and live it and feel it and breathe it. That's not happening. There's, I always see these forms and we are always sat and talked to and we're not in the process. Man shouldn't have to ask for the dollar. He should know because somebody is sitting there that looks just like him who is involved in the process and can say, this is where that dollar went. And I'm, by the way, I'm gonna tell you where the dollar 50 went. There's no transparency. And I think that people need to know where the money's going. Because I pay taxes. I'm sure everybody else does too. And that's important because the, that, those money are supposed to go, if you read the tax statement, for paying for schools and all kinds of repairs. And when we sit in a forum like this, we come back to where did that money go because I paid it, they took it out of my escrow account or what have you, where did the money go? And I'm being told, I'm upside down in my house, I don't have this money, I don't have this, I need to pay that. And in the world of coronavirus, that's a slap in the face. Some people can't even go to work. Some people can't send their children to school. Some people can't get unemployment benefits. Some people are standing in line to get fed. And then they have this on top of that, if they don't know if their house is going to fall in, it's unfair to say that there it is. Time. In forms like this, I don't care if a homeowner gets up here and cries and it takes an hour. Let them cry an hour. After everything they've been through, they deserve, they have earned the opportunity to tell their story and be heard no matter how long it takes. That's why we're here. 
And if we don't want to be here, or we have to go do something else, and we know it's our time to go, fine. But we need to be heard with compassion, and we need to be able to tell our story. Because if it were you or your family, that's when it changes. And we need to come at each other with that love and understanding. Accountability. You are accountable when you are a public servant to the people you serve. So we shouldn't be sitting here asking who, what, where, when, and why every time we meet. We ought to know some of that. And we ought to know less and less because we already know what we need to know and we're not asking the same questions going around the circle. I see a lot of dogs chasing the tail around here. The same questions. And I haven't been here as long as some of these other people have been here. And I grieve for them when it rains. No matter how light it rains, I grieve for them like, oh my God, am I going to drive down the street and somebody's refrigerator is out there or their antique buffet set or what have you. Because these, these things are actually happening. And compassion. I'm going to end with compassion. Have a heart and realize that just because you haven't experienced something a certain way, it doesn't make somebody else's experience and the way they're experiencing it wrong. We are human beings and we're supposed to act like it. And we need to learn to drop the political facilities and facultations of you're black and I'm white. I got this post and you don't. We, when we take an x-ray, 206 bones, black and white, that's everybody. And I want to see a little bit more involvement. If you say what you mean and you mean what you say, I want you to stand by your word, do the best job you can as a commissioner, change your way of thinking, have some of these people at the table, and it will change. But we can't keep doing the same thing. Can't keep doing the same thing. And now look where I live, too. I wish I had more space. I'd probably go buy some more stuff. <laughs> but they had to cut me off. But I love where I live, just like a lot of these people said. I hope to see everybody around the neighborhood. If I can be of loud service, like some of the other women in here, I'll take it. But let's work together and stop hiding behind what someone said and no one did and nobody told me. These people need action and they deserve it. If they were living here for free, I'd be like, oh, can't talk, can't touch that one. But that's not the case. Let's work together and mean it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
I've got cards. I will talk to you as far as compassion and wanting to be heard. This, this lady over here, uh, she wants to make sure that's happening. You can call me. You can email uh, Kelly as well. I will be one of the people out front, so I'll make sure that everybody has my information. I will be as transparent as I can possibly be. I didn't take this job because it was easy. I took it because I want to help people. I want to help the residents. My grandparents, before they passed away, lived here since 1984. My uncle still lives here. So it's 83. Um, relatively familiar with the area. Not every single street. I'm going to get a lot more familiar with it. Uh, I came in in July to the county, so I'm learning a lot more about it. But I want to learn, I want to learn a lot more about all of you. I want to make sure that these problems get solved. That's what I do as an engineer. I want to make sure that problems get solved and certainly don't create problems somewhere else. So the commissioners ask us, hey, we've got a problem, what's the solution? Well, we are going to do our level best, trust me. You call me, I'll tell you that every time. I'll be transparent and, uh, and I will do my level best. So if that's, if that's in question, you know, please know that we're going we're gonna to do everything we can. And we've got other resources as well. We do, we do as much as we possibly can to make sure these types of things don't happen. These hurricanes are, are awful. I've been through quite a few, living in a lot of different places, and they're all terrible. Some don't drop as much rain, but this one, as far as answering your question, I will definitely get your information, and that's something we will look into. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I, I really I have a lot of respect for y'all. This is tough. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry. Uh, all right. I don't see anybody else. Um, thank you. Thank you all for coming. And the folks are going to be uh, they're going to be set up as you go out the main entrance. Their folks are set up. They have the application packets. Um, please take the, the cards and reach out and ask questions. And we'll do the best that we can to try to make make progress.